What's up? What's up? What's up? I am totally amped up on caffeine. My wife, ever since I started working out with my dumbbells, lifting them up, doing some running around, carrying them like a roadie, um, she got me some protein powder with caffeine in it. Um, By Chike, in case you're wondering. But anyway... And I had a coffee, so yeah, buzz and buzz, buzz, coffee, 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 buzz, buzz, buzz. Hopefully Ben and Jerry's doesn't sue me now uh, for mentioning that ice cream that they made. But anyway, here's my progress. On uh, it's a uh, sort of a, a scrap build, um, but this is my prototype for the PCBs, and it come together. I got the low filter done this morning. Um, you might notice that these wires are a little thicker. I got mine open here, um, then those, and that's largely because I just wanted something with a little bit thicker of a core. The Mogami, the, the 2330 that I used before, had a, I think it's 24 um, gauge, I wouldn't be surprised if it's 26 gauge, I gotta look it up. Um, very, very thin, it's brittle, so I wanted to upgrade this to, this is Mogami 2524. It's got a uh, shield. It's got a regular braided shield, and it has a uh, conductive sheet on the inside. So basically, it's 99.9% shielded. I'm going to use that. The only downside is it's not as flexible. Okay. And I mean, that's basically the downside and the size. So it's a little bit thicker. I used a similar wire in my Steel String Singer number four build. Um, and let's talk capacitance for a second. So an often overlooked piece of amp building is the coax that's being used on the inside. Each coax has a different type of uh, capacitance per foot. And there's also a meter equivalent, but I'm only familiar with the foot uh, because I'm in America. Uh, America. And so this wire is 39 picofarad per foot. Okay, and what that means is that longer the cable, the more top end is rolled off a little bit. Now, um, Dumble, you might be asking, well, what did Dumble use? Dumble used like Tandy RG59, if I recall, um, 58 or 59, and that's 30 picofarad per foot. So this is a little, this is going to roll off a little bit of that high end a little bit more. This amp is sort of known to be a little bright. I mean, if you look at John, when he uses his John Mayer, of course, um, he's got that uh, smooth and slim that he uses just to take that top end off. So in theory, I should be eliminating the need or at least reducing the need for a smooth and slim uh, in this. My amp over here, it's very similar. So all the tone demos that you've seen of, of this amp... That wire is pretty similar. I think it's 38 picofarad per foot. So if you're wondering how this sounds, and if you'd like the sound of this amp, it's probably going to be a good representation of where this amp is going to be as far as coax and capacitance goes for these wires. All right, so there's your sort of lesson of the day about capacitance and coax, and often overlooked. Another thing I'm doing this time around is I'm only using... Um, this is actually aerospace grade, so I'm really digging it, by the way. So if you look here, this braid, it's all aerospace grade wire, um, very, very thin. It's still 600 volts, um, basically insulation, which is awesome, but it's super, super nice braided, uh, or it is stranded, by the way, um, and it holds in place. So if I put a 90 degree bend, I didn't do a really good job up here. But if I did a 90 degree bend, it will stay in place. And it makes really, really, so this is 18 gauge and I'm using 20 gauge up here. Super, uh, you know, very efficient, very compact. This is 18 gauge for my heater wire and it really twists nice and easily. These holes I'm going to have to cover. Um, it, it's just, again, I'm, I'm using a chassis that was uh, a scrap and I'm turning it into something awesome. This is not plugged in at all. But you can sort of see one of the other things we're doing here is a backing plate for the FET and the um, rectifier. One thing, 
Erwin and I sort of discovered, and it was an easy fix, is that um, we don't use a bias tap in this amp. We actually take off the 320 uh, high voltage line, and then that but that was an easy fix for me because I just ran a wire in the back to go from this AC line up to where the um, tap is for this uh, oh for the resistor down there. See there. So I just ran a wire in the back, and then everything else was good. Here is sort of my modification, and I think I mentioned this in my other video, about uh, how to make this fixed bias into variable bias amp. And I basically twist the wire. There's a 10K in there. Twist the wire because there is AC. Goes to this 2-watt wire-wound potentiometer. It's multi-turn. And then that way you get a really stable and very accurate because it takes multi-turns to go through there. So that's sort of my deal there. Here's my bias wire comes out. Um, have the fuse. Here is something cool. So I'm using this time around uh, Hammond transformers, and I'm really impressed. I have no doubt that they're just as good as the original um, you know, they are paper, just like Classic Tone, uh, which is great. Because if you look over here, Classic Tone's a little similar. Uh, the difference is that, see how there's a gap between the chassis? And this is the, their quote, the Classic Tone quote, standard, standard mounting. And it, the advantage of that standard mountain, mounting is that when you take the amp out and set it down... It stands up straight. Now, if you had a vintage transformer, that would be flush to the top. Another advantage of the standard mounting is that you can, there's a gap, so you can actually take your standoffs, wherever it is, like right here, you can take those standoffs and mount them, the, the actual screw underneath, because let's see if we can find one. See how that screw is underneath? Uh, this one up here, and there's a gap. If I used a regular or vintage um, tr output transformer, that would actually cause problems because that transformer is flush to the chassis. So Classic Tone and Hammond kind of thought ahead and created a gap over there. Um, what I did notice is that the, which is actually kind of nice, Hammond's... Uh, plate here that brings the output transformer down makes the output transformer and the power transformer flush. So I've been using this piece of tape and part of my mess as a way to keep the chassis level when I'm working on it. But now since I installed the power transformer and the output transformer, I don't have to worry about that. The amp is flush. It's off the ground. It's ergonomically good for me um, working on it, which is a plus because, you know, you spend a bunch of hours in this amp and you can get a little tired. One other improvement, actually there's a couple improvements I've been probably glossing over. Um, one of the other improvements is, besides trying to get that lead out, um, there's actually two improvements, I think. I'm running the heater wire like this. Before you would have, in the other video, I sort of like came in, up, in, up, like that. And now it's this is actually how Dumble did his, which it went the white wire up, white wire up, kind of like that. And then tucked the other in the corner here, kind of like what you see in, in modern amps um, or new new amp builds. Uh, I know some of you online are going to be like, well, there's even a better way, which is actually bringing this black wire up here and then wire, bring it back down. I should be doing that way if I really want to be perfect. And you're right. Um, I'm going to try this first. It's a, it's a learning experience. This is a prototype amp. Uh, I'm going to learn. If it creates a buzz, it's going to suck because there's a lot of rework that needs to happen. But it's part of the learning process, right? Continuous improvement. Uh, I've seen this 
approach done multiple times, and I don't think I've really ever heard or read about a complaint on those vendors who make amps like that. I'm pretty confident um, haters be haters, haters be hatin', and that's about that. What else can I talk about? Oh, the Hammond Transformer um, requires, it doesn't have a center tap for the, uh, what's that called? The heater wire. Sorry, escaping me. Brain's going too fast, too much caffeine. So there isn't a center tap. So what we need to do is like kind of what the Fender old style used to do is take 100 ohm resistors and then bring that right to ground. That creates an artificial center tap. And if anything was to go wrong, all the voltage would, you know, go to ground and safely and, and save things from blowing up, at least from what I've heard. So that's good. I don't think there's really anything more to talk about. Um, one of the things I did, another thing, I guess, every time I say it, there's nothing more to talk about. There is something to talk about. Um, this standoff, or this bias tap, was a little too high for this. Again, this is just a scrap chassis. So what I did was I actually cut it down so it wouldn't be in the way. When I put, and I'm trying to find, hold the camera and find what I'm looking for at the same time. So when I put this board down, there's a nice gap. And now you can just solder it. Actually, I'm not even showing it that well. But there's a pretty good gap there now. Do you guys want to see what it looks like when I start putting the amp the board together. Actually, I might actually be able to put the reverb board on uh, pretty soon and have that secured and mounted. These holes don't line up exactly with the sockets, and that's b uh, strictly because this is a scrap chassis, and I can just run the wires uh, out to the side. So, um, yeah, once I put that in there, everything's good. It doesn't touch, nothing's shorting out. Um, pretty exciting how it's all coming together starting to look like a real amp now and I can't wait to hear the tones coming out of it hope you guys are doing well we're doing well thank you for asking actually I'm proactively answering your question in advance um, check this out so that wire you're going to see here I'm sort of emulating the same thing. Kind of neat. Uh, all right, I'm done playing here. Check that out. See ya.